What is going on guys? Cowboy here. Welcome back to Vampires. We make our way to the end and I found the damn symbol tucked back in this freaking corner. One place I didn't look. I like, walked all the way back here. I basically did this. I basically walked around the room and then went like this and then kept walking. Fucking ridiculous. Anyway. One last switch. There's my moon. Here's my sword. Voila. Let's go. Elizabeth came to me, 1667. Damn! This goes way back. Way back. Way, way back. Elizabeth, how old is that booty? I needs to know. Drop your sword, father. You have nothing to be afraid of. Abandon this then? Shall we lower our heads? No. Never. You taught me that. Blood is approaching. Old but young. How strange. Shall I drink it? Smite it? No, Father. He is a friend. Much for vampires not aging. Elizabeth. Deceit runs through these veins. I know, Father. What took you so long, Jonathan? Is this really him? Yes. This is William Marshall, first Earl of Pembroke. Servant of five mortal kings, former regent and savior of England. The greatest knight who ever lived, according to some. And you called him father. For he gave me eternal life, and much more. I have so many questions, Elizabeth. You always had questions, Dr. Reed. Now that I stand before you both, in this vault. I know not where to begin. We still have a few minutes left. Where are we? What is this place? This is the Ashbury estate. I inherited the title when I purchased the castle. Is this your retreat? Something of a secret place? It's more of a sanctuary, really. This is where I... Take care of my father, ever since he became unwell. Why did you flee here? When you told me I was the healthy carrier, I had nowhere else to go. You mean you had to return to the real source of this scourge? Yes, to end it once and for all. That doesn't make sense. Why would William Marshall... He stopped it before. Will you go back to London? No, Jonathan. I do not intend to. But you had your whole life there. Not anymore. Especially after my dear Charlotte was murdered. I think she knows I killed Charlotte. I have destroyed the disaster. This creature that Harriet Jones had become. The epidemic is no more. And London will recover. In time. The city has suffered, but it will prevail in the end. A more cynical analysis would be that this is an acceptable catastrophe. I cannot bear knowing I was the cause of all this through the use of my own blood. No. This catastrophe was the result of unethical experimentation and the will of a creature so inexplicably evil she exceeds all the terrible wonders I have seen since my death. But it was my blood all along. My corrupted blood of hate. The poisoned blood of my father. 
A healthy carrier. That's all I am. We could cure him. It's too late. The blood of hate has run for too long. The antidote would not work on him. I tried. Believe me, I tried. Is he dangerous? What do you think? He is a thirsty echo who has not fed in centuries. An elder vampire driven by an urge to kill and spread the blood of hate. Can he communicate? Yes. Sometimes he even seems like the noble knight who saved and raised me. But you know, the malice never fully leaves his eyes. No redemption then. And yet he thinks he has been offered immortality by the angels to protect the feeble and to smite the unholy. So I guess maybe he got infected with the blood of hate during his battle with the Red Queen? Why are you hiding William Marshall here? How could I not take care of him? He sacrificed himself by giving me the only dose of antidote he had. Wait, what? He gave you the antidote? Yes. And in doing so, he knew he'd have to be confined here. And yet he volunteered. That's how great a man William Marshall was, and still is. What do you do for him? I visit him as often as possible. I paint the landscapes he will never see again. I feed him with my blood. You feed him? You barely sustain yourself on the weak blood of the dying, yet you give him your blood? After he saved me from the blood rage, I swore I would never kill to feed. He said the same. Well, I didn't make that same agreement. William Marshall infected you. He is the true original carrier. Yes. But he saved me by sacrificing himself. Saved you? How? The tears of angels. The cleansing of impure blood by an older, more powerful blood. It worked on me, did it not? Yes. Blood is the definitive key to our species. Scowls, cleansing, lineage. Do you really think it worked? It has, Jonathan. I was nothing but a beast who took pleasure in slaughter. I roamed across Europe, reaping my bloody crop. It was the blood of hate. But my father's antidote cured me. Who are you, really? How could I answer that? I went through many lives and identities to reach this day. To you, I am Elizabeth Ashbury, and that's all I wish to be. I need to know more. I want to know who you really are, where you were born, where you lived. I was born Elizabeth Samantha Mary Englewood in 1551 in Hertfordshire. My parents owned a pub in Hoddesdon. Are you satisfied? How did you meet William Marshall? He was an echo for centuries when he found me. He saved me from certain death by making me his progeny. Why did he choose you? You should ask him that. You said he can barely communicate. What about us? What do you mean? You know my feelings towards you, Elizabeth. But you left without a word. So I'm worried about your feelings towards me. I love you, Jonathan. I've loved you since the moment I saw you rescue poor Mr. Hampton in that filthy slaughterhouse. Forgetting the danger as you turned your back like the newborn fool you were. Maybe Booty is still in the equation. You should have told me. No, Jonathan. The William Marshall myth lies at the heart of so many hostile plans. I could not risk jeopardizing his safety. So why did you come here? You knew I would follow you. 
I can't let you go. Because I know now the blood of hate is still in my veins. No one but I can put an end to this tragedy. I can help you. You can trust me, Elizabeth. I know, Jonathan. You have been the most loyal ally these last few weeks. But this is my duty. Would your protege agree to speak with me? I have so many questions for him. Go on, Jonathan. But be careful. Yes? Sir William. My God. You really are William Marshall. You served Richard the Lionheart and his brother, King John. It is such a privilege to meet you. I did in my day. Come closer if you want to speak. For my hearing isn't what it used to be. I think your hearing <laughs> is fine, sir. What is it you want, then? The blood of hate, how does it affect you? Do you feel it now? The blood of hate? Yes. Nothing more than a sneeze, really. A sneeze held for so long, you could blow a fortress down if you released it. Can we speak about the Morrigan? The Red Queen? What of her? You met her, did you not? Just once. But she never ceased to sing to me. I love her song. It is a song of blood and war. I only wish she would sometimes let me rest. Do you know who she is? I don't want to discuss this in front of my sweet Elizabeth. Why? For a time, she too could hear the red song. The steps she danced to its melody brought pain upon the world. I would like to ask you about vampires. Vampires? What about them? Considering your experience, please tell me what you know. They are terrible creatures. I have seen and fought many in my time. Foul temptresses with sharp claws and shrieking beaks. Where did you encounter such creatures? The last time I saw one was in a Celtic temple near Salisbury. A terrible and godforsaken place full of ghosts and pestilence. Do you remember Murden, your maker? Only God is my maker, for he created everything on this earth. He blessed me with eternal life through his archangel, Michael. But Murden, Michael, is a vampire. He made you a blood-sucking creature of the night. Blood, yes. I used to drink it from the throats of the unworthy. Then I was punished for my deceit. During my penance, I rely entirely upon my sweet Elizabeth. Tell me about Elizabeth. How was she infected? I do not wish to discuss it. Please, Sir William. I need to know what the blood of hate is. How is it transmitted? After defeating the disaster in St. Paul's Cathedral, I return to my retreat, infected. This is where my sweet Elizabeth found me, for she heard my pain from across the sea. What happened then? The blood of hate had twisted me into a rage-filled man. I attacked my progeny and infected her too. Forgive me, Elizabeth. I failed you. You bit her again? Is that how she was infected with the disaster's blood? I think I understand now. Elizabeth fled, and I fell to my knees 
begging for forgiveness. I swore I would find a way to make things right. We could set you free, let you out. Isn't that what you want? I pray for the day I'll see the sky again. I have all but forgotten its colors. I could walk and do so many things beneath the stars. But I doubt it would be wise to release me. Then will you stay here and repent? Elizabeth told me it will not be long now. I cannot wait to feel the sweet caress of her hand on my cheek after so long as she releases me. Has the time come? Yes, Father. Why not unleash me then? To see the sky a final time. You already are the sky. And all its stars. I'm not defeated. For I welcome the sword you bear. For it is mine. You were never defeated, my lord. healthy carrier, as you put it. The flames will purify the poison that runs in my veins. No! I won't allow this to happen. I am death, Jonathan. Wherever I go, I can't stand it. Who cares? We are vampires. We are death. No, Jonathan. I won't bring another disaster into this world. I can't lose you, Elizabeth. Even if it means putting the whole world at risk. How can you say such an awful thing? Where is the Jonathan I once saved from a scowl in this abandoned factory? I'm not that frightened man anymore. I've learned so much. Done so much. I see. So there is nothing worth living for in this world anymore. Farewell, my love. Farewell. I mean, could get the crispy booty. You know. Uh, she's just preheating it is all. One prayer for the summoned called by this song. Child born from darkness whose path he must find. Now the song is sung and your path chosen. England is safe. The price paid most dear. But what do you care? You are the one who keeps killing. You've chosen your path, my fallen champion, like others before you. Prey to lust and desire, slave to the everlasting thirst. My queen sleeps once again, and I'll soon join her slumber. Until alas, she rises, woken by the hunger never fed. Right. So, uh, let's discuss. Um, you know, first and foremost, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, Oh my god, Cowboy, you got the bad ending. That's the bad ending. Elizabeth is dead. But honestly, I'm, uh, I'm satisfied with that ending. You know, especially the little epilogue thing about how I, I chose my own path. I decided to give in to the thirst. You see him sitting there, just blood dripping off the fangs. Some woman, beautiful woman, he just drained, he's sitting there with a chalice, like, fuck yeah, man, 
If I was turned into a vampire, that's the kind of life I would want to live. I would just, all day long, man. If I was a vampire, I would just be draining people and fucking and just doing whatever I wanted. That would be it. There would be no, well, I know I'm a vampire, but I better behave myself and only drink from dying people. Fuck that. You're a vampire. You drink from who you want. I would tear shit up, man. I would drain everybody and make an army of progenies and shit. So, in my eyes, that's the good ending. This is Jonathan, the only vampire woman he loved. He knew her for how long? Like, a week? Two weeks? He didn't know her long enough for there to be any real connection there. They just had this connection because she was a vampire, he was a vampire, he didn't know anyone else. Almost a little bit Stockholm Syndrome thing going on. So, her being gone, if anything, that is good. Because her now being gone means that Jonathan has no more attachments. He has no more attachments to the world. His sister is gone. His mother was killed. The house butler I drained myself, turned him into a Capri Sun juice box. I've made a couple progenies, the vampire hunter and the doctor dude, but I ain't worried about them. They can do their own thing. At this point, I have no more attachments, and Jonathan can truly embrace the creature of the night that he is meant to be, and on top of that, he has that old blood. He has that good blood. There is no vampire who's going to be able to match him. We took out Fergal Fuckface. We shit on the Ascalon Club. We do what we want. We are now the biggest dick vampire in all of London. And to me, that is the best possible outcome. And you could say, well, cowboy, what about Lady Ashbury? Man, fuck Lady Ashbury. Only thing cool about her was she was cute and she was a vampire, all right? There are plenty of other beautiful English women we could turn into vampires. Anyway, uh, moving on from there. Um, honestly, I didn't expect to enjoy this game as much as I did. I, I, like I said back at the start, I went into it kind of being like, yeah, you know, vampire games are, are usually okay, but this was a lot of fun. Uh, I will say, I think if somebody goes into this game thinking it's, you know, oh, I'm going to play a vampire game and I'm just going to fuck shit up and vampires are cool, I think they'll be disappointed. Um, I got, you know, pretty invested in the story and I think that's one of the main reasons I enjoyed it. I think this game is worth probably two playthroughs. Um, I understand there's four endings, I think, but... Honestly, I don't think I could go through it four times. I think I could go through it a second time, which I'm not going to do right now. I may do a second playthrough in the future, but I know a lot of you guys are like, do a second playthrough, do, do it, do it, do it, do it. Like, listen, if I do one, one, it's going to be something on stream. I'm not just going to upload another 30 plus episodes of this right now. There's other games that I want to work on. Um, but I think I could definitely see myself getting down on a second run through of it. Um, all in all, I did feel that... The abilities were okay. It was obviously a um, story-heavy game first and an RPG second. So, you know, I, I feel that they could have probably um, enhanced the abilities. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we had like our claw move, we had our blood explosion, we had our blood spear, and then each of those had a slight variation to it. A bunch of little spears or a big spear. Um, I would have liked to see a more in-depth vampiric system and... I mean, if we're to be honest, I don't know if this game is the medium for that. It's something that I certainly want, yes, but I don't think this is the game for it. Um, I think if somebody were to take this game and kind of the basis this built around Vampire with like the whole Shadow Blood physical, I like that. But if we were to take that and put that into, say, like a Witcher 3 type thing, I'm all about it. Let's let's go. That sounds like an RPG I will sink 100 hours into because I love vampire stuff. Um, but so for what this game was, I think it was really good. Uh, looking at the time, um, according to Steam, I'm coming up just under about 40 hours for my first playthrough. So honestly, that's pretty good. Um, usually my rule of thumb is that you need to get... Uh, what is it? You For every $2 you spend you need at least an hour of gameplay. That's kind of my my ratio. So if you pay 60 bucks for a game and you don't get at least 30 hours in it for your first playthrough, it's not worth it. In this game, I'm coming up closer to 40, and that's just with one playthrough, and there's certainly room for other playthroughs. So I do think the game is worth the price tag it has. Um, overall, the story is pretty good. A lot of the characters were dicks. Um, personally, I would have liked to see more um, 
I guess more moral dilemma type situations because for the most part, you know, like if somebody was an asshole, I had no problem whatsoever killing them. Um, but I would have liked to see a lot more interconnections. And given I didn't explore everybody, there were a lot of people at the docks that I never spoke with. Uh, and there were, you know, plenty of people in uh, Whitechapel that I could have spent a lot more time talking to. So I guess to, to elaborate on my point with what I'm talking about, I wish there was more of a moral story. Like something like, um, oh god, I don't know. For, for example, um, how when I decided that I was going to kill Milton, and killing Milton made Pippa go all crazy and leave the hospital and, you know, become a gang member or whatever the deal was with her. You know, I wish it's it to me it seemed like that the the general flow at least was like, you know, if I had to after that point and moving forward, I felt that if I killed somebody, I had to kill them and anyone else they were linked with. Um and I would have liked there to be I guess more of a moral connection between just like, okay, well this person's bad, so I'm gonna kill everyone he's with. Um I guess a good example of it would be like you know, let's say that there is a, like the gang member guy, right? Let's say the gang member, um, and then and, and, uh, the Joel guy. Joel's kind of a dick, but his son's good. So, you know, do I want to kill Joel because he's being a prick and he's hurting people, but then his son will be out. And that's a slight moral decision. But let's kick it up a notch. What if the son was actually a really, really useful merchant and he constantly sold shit that you really needed? At that point, it's the question of, well... If I kill this guy that's a dickhead, I'm going to lose access to this fantastic merchant that I want to have. And it's a lot more of a moral and a logical decision. Whereas with, you know, Milton, like, he had some stuff that was cool, but as soon as I started finding other merchants, I was like, oh, well, they have the same shit you do, and you're a fucking prick sitting here charging people to get a hospital bed. So fuck you, you're dead. You know, like, I didn't have any... Because the moral dilemma was, was over. It was just, okay, he's a prick. And then the logical dilemma was overcome as soon as I found another merchant. So I wish there would have been, um, you know, just, just heavier decisions, I guess, where, like, you had to really weigh the pro and cons of killing people. But especially as I progressed through the game and I found that people had similar inventories and whatnot, I, I very much started just looking at people in the game as cattle. Like, oh, you know, Cal 1 is old. Cal 2 has the same shit Cal 1 had, so let's just eat Cal 1 and get some easy XP. You know, I didn't I didn't consider them NPCs in the world. They were literally juice boxes. Um, despite that, I did like overall where the story went. Um, definitely some, some good, uh, what's the word, twists. Um, the whole Swansea using Elizabeth's blood. I did not see that coming. Um, the whole vampire thing, initially I was pissed off about the Maker, but then we found out that he was actually like the Maker Maker, like super old band Maker, and that um, William Marshall is actually like my blood brother basically, and I'm like, okay. Story pulled together a little bit better. I'm still not sure about the emphasis on like Celtic mythology. Um, personally, I would have loved to see some kind of tie-in to Dracula, but I get that would have been a little stereotypical of a vampire game, but still, I think it would have been cool. Um, but you know, all in all, vampire was definitely an enjoyable journey. Um, if I had to give it a final score, I'd say I'd put this at probably seven and a half out of ten. Um, and before someone's like, oh, well, a seven is a C. No, no, I'm talking on a scale. See, too many people pussyfoot when they score games, and I think that's important to mention. If I say something is 50, that doesn't mean it's shit. That means it's perfectly average. So, 7.5 is a solid score. A lot of people have this this thing where something has to be complete shit to get, like, you know, get a 70 or below. No, 70, you know, even, even a 60 is considered, like, a passing score. So, um... Anyway, 75 out of 100, 7.5 out of 10, whatever you want to say. Main points I think could have been improved is the combat could have been expanded. The combat system itself wasn't terrible, but I think it could have definitely had more to it. Uh, I would have liked to have uh, heavier mental and logical choices when I had to decide who to kill and who to let live. Um... Honestly, I think a fast travel type system would have been nice as well. 
Um, you know, maybe like being able to warp between different um, different resting spots. Like, you know, if you're resting at one and you want to hop over instead of having to sprint through the town and fight people and whatnot, just, you know, you're a vampire. Use a turn into some bats and fly to the other area that's safe. I think that would have been nice to see. Um, but points that were really good. I mean, story was obviously very, very involved. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, the music... Mm. Like this, this part coming up right now with the, the cello in just a second, fucking every time I hear it, I'm like, yeah, that's good. And you'll hear the part in just a second. It's about to come up. Get ready. Here we go. Ah, it sounded nice, right? It's like the music is angry. You can feel it. Anyway, gonna wrap this one up here for now. Put an end to Vampire. Uh, as for the next title I will be tackling on the channel, I'm honestly not sure what I want to tackle just yet. Uh, we just started streaming the Jurassic Park game, and I think that is definitely better for streams than a game series. Um, so maybe I'll visit something that's on my to-do list. I'm not sure. I have to like really go in and see what is coming up. But either way, guys, thanks for joining me on this journey. Your viewership is always appreciated. And we'll see you next time with a new game.